welcome back to the channel. Before we get going, I wanna do a little preface to the video. First of all, the video is about this little baby. That's right, the Pipistrelle Velis Electro. It's an electric plane. Just so everybody knows, not a lot of planning went into this. My son is a pilot here at Santa Monica, and he asked me if I wanted to take a ride in this, and I was like, absolutely. So I brought a little mic that I had, and I brought my iPhone. So the audio is not perfect, and the video is not gonna be shot perfect, but it's gonna be an awesome video. Second thing I wanna say is that if you see a little bit of this, uh, that, or uh, it's fake. It's not real. I did it in post, and it's just for fun. So don't freak out if you see that. Also, no one paid me to do this. This is not a paid sponsorship. My son teaches people to fly in it here in Santa Monica. And he invited me to take a ride. It's not just a basic review. This is literally like taking a ride with a real CFI. So this video is longer, but I guarantee you it's chock full of all kinds of information. So if you like planes, you're in aviation, you should really watch it all the way through because Luke does an amazing job taking me on this trip. If you want more content like this, let me know in the comments below. And please, like always, like and subscribe. And that's it, enjoy the video. Welcome back to LA Editor, Alabama King. Uh, I am at Santa Monica Airport. Santa Monica Ground, the Pestrel Electric 343 Echo Alpha is out protest with Juliet. And I'm about to go up in a plane with my son, who's a pilot. Request taxi to 21 and flight following to Malibu. This isn't just your normal run of the mill airplane, it's an electric plane. Check it out. Pretty cool, huh? We're definitely going to go up and I'll get some shots. You can hear how it sounds. It's probably the quietest plane on earth first electric plane on the west coast that's being used to train people and Luke is the first certified flight instructor to, to be doing it so it's pretty awesome yeah thanks a lot Luke. Patrol 343 Echo Alpha Santa Monica Tower runway 21 clear for takeoff we're gonna go up in the Pepestrel Velis Electro Aircraft. It's Santa Monica's first all-electric aircraft and one of the first ever certified in the United States. So what are you guys primarily planning on using this plane for? Um, mostly pre-solo flight training. So just learning basic maneuvers and um, how to fly an aircraft. It's very, very stable. It's a really nice aircraft to fly. Um, so you can't do cross countries in it or night flying, unfortunately. Uh -huh. So mainly just uh, the basics. How long will it fly in the air? On a full charge with uh, the reserves that are required by FAA regulations, it can fly for approximately 50 minutes or so. So that's about how long a, a, a class is for teaching somebody how to fly? Um, in this aircraft, yes, because we're actually practicing and doing maneuvers quite close to the airport. A lot of intro flights will be on this? Oh, absolutely. 57%, so we'll give it uh, 20 minutes or so, and then probably take the Ah, awesome. It's pretty cool. Inside, it's kind of cool because it seems like you've got handles and levers, and it feels like flying like a Wright Brothers plane as opposed to a regular plane. Kind of, yeah. It's, it's very simple. So where does the luggage go? <laughs> but no, see, what's the, uh, how much weight can this carry? 390. And that's with gas in it, or? And you don't have gas. Oh, that's right. Uh, uh, uh. It's pretty cool. Hopefully as soon as next month our black shape will be online too. What's a black shape? It's like the fighter jet training here. Oh, that is so cool. Wait, okay, so what is this black shape? A fighter aircraft? No, it's, it's an Italian make and model. And recently the FAA had to put a ground stop on it because one crashed in, uh, I think it was Indonesia. But um, the ground stop has been lifted by the FAA, they found the uh, cause of the crash, its wings fell off, um, had nothing to do with the plane itself. The mechanics over there apparently modified it, had extra fuel tanks, hit a spark, and it exploded, Jeez. causing the wings to fall off. But yeah, it's a beautiful airplane. Um, I'm really excited to fly it. It looks like a fighter jet. It is. So they use these in Europe to train people who are first learning how to fly fighter jets. Correct, yeah, it's a military trainer. Awesome, so will this be rented out or? I believe it will be. Um, we're still finalizing all the details with it. Um, I've gotten to be lucky enough to get to taxi it and check the engine on it every so often and I'm gonna give it a wash because it's had to sit for a while with the ground stop, but uh, yeah, it's really cool. 15 minutes later. 
What's this thing? So this is the electric charger for the aircraft. It's kind of like a Tesla supercharger, but for the airplane. Right now it's plugged in. We're almost ready to fly. It's almost at full charge. Okay, so how long does it take it to go from like zero empty to a full charge? Um, at this amperage, about 80 minutes, maybe two hours. It depends on how cool it is and um, how easily the battery is. Okay, so I'm a little freaked out because what happens if we lose power? Well, it has glider wings. And this plane has a glide ratio of 17 miles horizontally for every one mile vertically. We actually did some testing in it and we took it out to Malibu at 3,000 feet and we were able to glide all the way to the Santa Monica Pier. Wow, so you turn the plane off? Yeah. Well, you don't have to turn the plane off. When you bring the power to idle, the prop stops. Ah, uh, yeah. Wow. That is so cool. And is it loud or is it quiet? Oh, it's the quietest airplane in the entire world. That's pretty amazing. When you do your pre-flight checkouts for this plane, is there anything special yeah. that you do that's different? Yes, absolutely. Whenever we're doing that pre-flight, one, you have a charging port, charging cable. And so we just want to make sure that when we're ready to go fly, we take this out. It's closed, shut, and locked, kind of like your car at home. Yeah. And then another unique feature is the prop itself. Because it doesn't have a crankshaft or anything, it just very easily moves. So it just spins around. like, is it with magnets? Um, that's what spins it around? It's got an electric motor. I'm honestly not quite sure exactly how, but it's just converting the battery's energy into right. motion of the propeller. Okay. And then right here is a really special feature. It's kind of like a gaming computer if anyone has one at home. The batteries are liquid cooled. And so that's a closed anti-freeze um, solution in there that cools the batteries the entire time the plane's flying. So we like to check to make sure there aren't any uh, air bubbles and that the system is still closed and filled with liquid. Okay, cool. Yeah, and aside from that, it's a pretty standard pre-flight. You're just checking the flapper on, still have integrity. You're checking the wings here. I like to just go over, give it a little rock, make sure that it's nice and uh, on the aircraft tightly. Flapper on, I just move one up. I want to see the other go down and vice versa. So what's the difference again between a flapper on and what you, an ail, aileron? So Typically on most aircraft, like any of the pipers in our fleet or on the black shape over there, you have something called an aileron, and they are closer to the edges of the wings, and they basically control the roll of the airplane. Oh, uh, okay. And then you have a separate set of flaps, which help you to descend faster without speeding up. So these do the exact same thing. They're just all integrated into one system. So if you see, when I bring the flaps down here, you see how they move. Oh yeah. Down in position. But when I roll the aircraft, the flaps move like ailerons. Cool. So awesome. that's unique. We also have an air cooling inlet here. And that's typically gonna be for the battery liquid coolant to ensure that everything stays cool. So, so it's both air and liquid cooled. Great. Our plane will not sound like that. And then back here, we just have the tail section with our lovely T-tail elevator. And then we also have a rudder system here. So when I'm looking here, I'm just looking to make sure the integrity of all these bolts is good. We want to look for that red paint. That means they've been checked and they're locked into place and so they're not going to come out easily. So I'm just checking both sides there. They look fantastic. We're also checking our wheels, of course, making sure they're not flat. Looking at these brake discs, making sure they're not warped. They look fantastic. Flapper on check on this side, as always, making sure all of our antennas are nice and secure on the back of the aircraft, which they are. This is our pitot tube. It's what gives us our airspeed readings, so we just want to make sure that that pitot tube is nice and clear. Give the wing another wiggle. Pitot tube looks clear. And that's your entire pre-flight. We've already done our pre-flight. The aircraft looks ready to fly. So the response to this, people finding out you guys have an electric plane, it's been pretty crazy, huh? Oh, absolutely. People are going crazy for it. I mean, it's revolutionary. It's not something that you see every day. No. So getting to instruct in it and being one of the first, actually the first at Santa Monica to be able to teach in it is pretty cool. Quite an honor. Yeah. We'll leave those there. Come on get back. Okay. Get on in. All right. So where do I go? You're going to go on the left seat there. Getting in, you want to kind of go with your front first. So you can sit nice and gently into your seat. And then ever so slowly, pull your leg over. Sit down tonight. 
Okay, here I go. Maneuver your way in there. Then this leg will come up and over. And down there. And this okay. is your headset. Okay, so I've got Bluetooth headset. Yep. Cool. Nice little hanger sword. Grab that. Ready? Yep. So the bottom ones come first. It's gonna be kind of on the uh, rightmost side. There you go. And then you're gonna get your shoulder straps. Tighten that. Got one kind of behind you. There it is. It's gonna go up and over. And then they're snug, and then the other one is right behind you there. Yep. Luke Farine, certified flight instructor, cameraman. <laughs> Apparently so. Don't know how well I'm doing here. You're gonna wanna lift this little tab on your side. You're just gonna pull it down. Slowly let the door close. Make sure your uh, seatbelt flap isn't stuck outside the door or anything. Is that, that right? Yep, and then you're gonna twist this towards you. Oh, okay, pull it in and twist it. Yep. Okay, All set. Cool. All right, we got out our checklist. Avionics off, battery off, power off. Aircraft log book is filled. Doors are secured and latch. Position of rudder pedals are set and locked. Click controls, watch your legs. Mm -hmm. Free and correct. Seat belts fastened. Power lever is at cutoff. Parking brakes engaged. And then circuit breakers are all engaged. ELT is ready. All right, before taxi, master switch coming on. They all lit up just a second ago. That was our stall warning. Stall warning is functioning properly. I'm gonna go to this system page here. It's like a Tesla, a yep. flying Tesla. Status is ready. The state of health is at 99, which is perfect. Temps all look good. Our volts look good. We're above 13 here, and the engine is inactive. That's what we wanna see. Next is our avionics switch. I'm gonna turn that on, and I'm gonna get us our weather for today. Alrighty, so for the weather, the frequency was 119.15. Get a Monica Airport, Mission Juliet, mm -hmm. 2351. Yep, and then bring your mic just a little closer to your mouth. Seven, verbal okay, can you hear me? Yep. And 260. Visibility 10, Clover 1 2000, temperature 23, 2.15, altimeter 2981. 81. You are Alpha, Arnav, visual approach, and East Lane departing runway 21. Use caution drone activity over downtown Beverly Hills. Advise on initial contact. You have information, Juliet. All right, we have Juliet. We're going to switch to our tower frequency because we just go straight to the runway pretty much. No run up required in this plane. All right, we're going to start her up. So battery engaged and power engaged. All right, so. Wow, so it's on right now. Yep, it's on. We're going to our status here and it's active, active. Status is active. Hobbs looks good and temps haven't changed. Press to accept this, go to our map. That'll show us our airport layout. And then we're gonna do our quick run up right here in the parking spot. We've gotten before taxiing, checked is that everything state of health is above 50% over 13 volts. Radios all set. And I'm just running through this list here, checking active, times noted, brakes will disengage, will increase for taxi. We'll just do our power check right here. So parking brake is engaged, holding on the brakes myself as well. Power level, where you have to go to full power here. And we're gonna watch this kilowattage unit here. We want it to go above 50. So as I bring up the throttle, engine turns on, and we're gonna go all the way to full. Went above 50. Dude, that's crazy how quiet it is. I bring the power back to idle, and as you can see, it's just gonna keep winning. So that's checked. All of our temps look good. Flaps will come set to one for takeoff, and we're gonna start heading out. Ready right. to go? Let's do it. Okay. Santa Monica okay. Ground, Pipestral Electric 343 Echo Alpha is at protest with Juliet. Request taxi to 21 and flight following to Malibu. November 343 Echo Alpha, Santa Monica Ground, runway 21 taxi via Bravo. 21 taxi via Bravo, 3 Echo Alpha. All right. Goodbye, Proteus. Goodbye, Proteus. Hello, fun. So I've got my feet on the pedals down here, is that okay? Yeah, that's totally fine. You're gonna be flying this plane soon. I'm gonna get us off the ground and then I'll have you fly it kind of out towards Malibu. We're gonna cruise. Three Echo Alpha, remain outside class forever. Zero two five four. Zero two five four. 0254. Bravo, no, no, three Echo Alpha. All right, so zero two five four. This number here is basically just how they track us because we don't have any traffic indications in here. So what I wanna be able to do is be able to get traffic call outs from ATC. We're gonna be quite low. I don't think we're gonna be near anybody out there doing anything. We're gonna be at around 700 feet over the ocean, well away from the shoreline so that we're not, you know, encroaching on anyone's houses or anything, but it's quite quiet. So I don't think it would bother too many people. 
<laughs> this is crazy. It's really quiet. Brake check. Brakes are checked. And there goes a jet. And as we're moving here, I'm just double checking all of my system temps here. They're all in the green. I'm double checking our source of charge right there, which is 93%. We uh, tend to try to bring the aircraft back towards the airport environment at around 50%, and uh, we don't want to be flying past 30, 15% is the absolute minimum allowable for a go around. So we want to be on the ground well before then, and we want to be at the airport uh, at 30% because that way we have two go around attempts if necessary. 13% battery charge. Yep. It's a little bit windy today, a little bit gusty, so uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to have a normal takeoff. Um, but it may be a bit bumpy because we are quite light. This so, aircraft empty is 929 pounds okay. total. Well, so uh, you're not even touching your stick. Nope. But yet we're steering, and that's because you're steering with your feet. Correct. In airplanes, when you're taxiing on the ground, you steer with your feet. Right foot to go right, left foot to go left. Is that true for, like, the big boys? Um, so the big jets, you can somewhat steer it on the ground just using your rudder pedals. However, they have a little tiny circle here. They call it tiller steering. Oh. And so they just use the circle to do very um, tight turns, things of that nature. Because when you're on the runway, you want to be able to control your direction. But um, you want to be able to also input more rudder than you are the main wheel. And these tiny aircraft, doesn't really matter. You're not in a lane, you're on the line. Yep. Exactly. So that's what you want to do is you want to keep your middle uh, wheel on the on that line. Correct. So all I'm trying to do is is basically keep this line straight going in between my legs. When I can do that, I know I'm pretty much on the center of the line. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So most GA planes, small planes like this, require what's known as a run-up. And that's to check all the engine parameters, make sure the oil's looking okay, but we have none of that. All we have are our temps and uh, the anti-freeze fluid in the front that's cooling the batteries. <laughs> and so all we have to see is, oh, it's there. And it seems to be functioning because our temps aren't skyrocketing. But if that were to fail, it's actually just as bad as an engine failure. You're required to put it down immediately wherever you are. Okay. But considering this aircraft has a fantastic glide ratio, we're not too concerned. All right, so we're almost to the runway here. We're going to be going on Bravo 5 right there and we're going to hold short of the runway. I'm going to switch our frequency down there to tower, and tower will control us in the airport environment, and then we're going to go over to SoCal, and SoCal is going to watch over us until we come back towards Santa Monica. Okay, cool. Yep. It'll be very exciting. This aircraft is the Tesla of the skies, so it will accelerate very quickly. And unlike other conventional aircraft, as you'll see when we pull up to these hold bars here, the prop will stop spinning, so we don't kill that poor little birdie. So I'm going to just pull up nice and easy, hold short of the runway, switch over to tower frequency, set this for work, and so okay. perfect. And we're ready to go. You ready to go? I'm ready to go, yeah. Alrighty. I'm excited. Santa Monica Tower, Patrol 343 Echo Alpha is holding short of 21 at Bravo 5, requesting a right turn at the shoreline. Patrol 343 Echo Alpha, Santa Monica Tower, wind 240 at 9, runway 21, clear for takeoff. 21, clear for takeoff, 3 Echo Alpha. Engines back on. Final is clear, no one's coming in to land. I see 2-1 on the runway. What's 2-1? That is the heading number of the runway. So every runway has a heading number pointing to wherever the magnetic heading for the airport is. So we're on 2 Touch on aircraft, turn information, kilo, landing departing runway 2-1, wind 2409 or altimeter 2981. All right, you ready? Ready, let's see how fast this baby accelerates. Engine instruments in the green, here's speed alive. 50, rotate. Alrighty. We got quite a bit of runway left, don't we? Oh, yeah. Tons of runway left. We're at 300 feet now, pulling power back to conserve. 40 kilowatts. And flaps. Are coming up. 274 Tango Tango, Santa Monica Tower, make ray traffic, runway 21. Wow, this is super, what That's a treat, Luke. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot, you really feel like you're riding in a kite a bit. Yeah. Like you can feel the wind lift you a lot. Oh, yeah. Such a light plane. I'm gonna tower something really quick. 
Next tower for 3 Echo Alpha, are there any uh, aircraft low level to shoreline? We were thinking about pulling out the run 700. Echo over 3 Echo Alpha, no aircraft, you've got the shoreline to yourself again. Roger that, thank you, 3 Echo Alpha. Alright, so I'm going to get nice and high over the city here, just so I'm not bothering anyone on the takeoff. And then I'm going to head down towards the water, and we're going to cruise in between maybe five to 700 feet down there. Alright, that sounds awesome. RPMs are set, but you can see just how much charge was used on that takeoff. It requires so much energy. Yeah, we're at 87%. Actually, yeah, we used 4% of our power almost just on that takeoff. All right, wow. we're approaching the shoreline, so I'm going to try to regain some power, just like a Tesla when I bring it to idle. You can see it's in the negatives on the kilowatts. It's actually recharging your battery. So we'll do a nice glide. With these glider wings, we can glide very nicely. How, how does it recharge the battery? You know how in a Tesla With when- that intake? Is it the intake? Yeah, it's kind of like a little windmill. Oh, gotcha. Yep. No respect. Absolutely no respect. So it cools the battery and recharges it at the same time. Correct. All of our ah. systems are active and looking great. Oh my God. Guys, this is the audio. It's going to be really interesting to hear just how quiet it actually is. Because I'm wearing the headsets. All right, we're going up to 20 kilowatts now just for our cruise phase of flight. We're going to stick around this altitude and fly nice and low over the beach. Head so, kind of towards Malibu. Before you were checking to make sure it would get up to uh, 50 kilowatts without a problem, right? So yes, it has to get at or above 50 kilowatts to be able to continue the flight because that's your takeoff power and your go-around power in the event that you can't land on the runway for whatever reason. Gotcha. Yeah, so we're going over the famous Santa Monica Pier here. The Baywatch Beach. Oh yeah. Very cool. That's the Pacific Ocean. Look at how all the buildings are on that cliff, isn't that crazy? Yep, and even with all this wind, I can just let go of the controls and the plane will fly itself. It's so stable. Wow, so why is that? Just because it's balanced? On one hand, it's the flapperons, so they provide a lot of stability. On the other hand, you have to remember, this is basically a glider with an engine. Right. That's all it is. And gliders are meant to be inherently stable. All right, cool. So when you're saying it's stable, it's because you're taking your hand off that yoke right there, right? Yep, so we're perfectly trimmed out right now, but this plane, you actually don't have to trim it. Trim is kind of like a poor man's autopilot. So it allows to you to take control pressures off of your control surfaces whenever you're climbing or descending, because sometimes with all that airflow, it becomes difficult to actually fight against them. Whatever, four chain of tango, contact ground. Contact ground, park Very cool. Yeah, this so is the Palisades right here. Mark 83, oh yeah, this is the Palisades, there we go, that's where Don't we live. There's the famous bluff. The Mescal Canyon. Hey, there's our house. Yep. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll fly over our house too. Nice. We're gonna go out um, just a little bit further, maybe closer to Topanga and uh, the Malibu Pier. Then we're gonna hang a 180 come back over the Palisades, turn around our house in the high school, then we'll head on back into Santa Monica. All right, that sounds great. All right, so show me how to do something, Luke. All right, give me one second. I'm just going to switch over to SoCal, and then I will. Tower for 3 Echo Alpha, do you want us to stay with you or go over to SoCal? Oh, they're not going to want you if you're going to be down low like that. So I'll wait until you get above a thousand if you plan on doing that later. Roger that. We'll be uh, climbing up here shortly. Okay, Air Smart 83, contact SoCal departure. Departure Air Smart 83. Yeah. Alrighty. So now that we're getting kind of out here, I'm going to initiate another climb up to a thousand feet. That way we can do a nice flipperoo and come back to the Palisades. Hey Luke, let me ask you something. When you were talking to the guy, do you press that button that's on your... Yeah, mic? so that's our key mic. So whenever we want to talk with air traffic control, we have to click it and hold it, finish our request, and then release it, and then they'll get back to us. Oh, uh, very cool. So 
So a few things you need to know before you glide. These rudders aren't just important for the ground, they're important for flying too. So anytime you go into a slight turn or anything, you have something called a turn coordinator. We call it the ball. Wherever the ball moves, you want to press your foot. You want to keep it nice and centered. If it goes to the right, you're going to press more on your right rudder. And then if it goes to the left, you're going to press on your left rudder until it centers again. Just like a little level. That's cool. This right here, right here. Yep. So can you tilt a little bit and show me how it works? Sure. So if I was to not use my rudders, you see how that ball starts to move out yeah. of there? Or if I was just to use my rudders, Whoa, that ball's going right. to swing out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. So you just want to step on it anytime you're in a turn. Do you want me to take the camera for you and give you control of this puppy? As long as you're okay with that. Oh, yes I am. Alrighty. Your aircraft controls. Wow. Okay. So you don't want to hold it like a fighter jet. You kind of want to just hold it with little fingers right here. And what I want you to do, just give us a slight right turn by just turning it to the right, pushing it over. And then you'll see you need to step on that ball a little bit. Maintain Wait. altitude. On the left? Nope, on the right. So wherever the ball moves, you want to step. Now turn back to the left. Oh my gosh, it doesn't take much. No. Very but, sensitive, right? So if the ball is on the right, uh huh. I want to move. Push my foot on the right a One little second. bit. One second. Over to SoCal 125.2, 3 Echo Alpha. Okay, we're at 1,000 feet. One second, yep. SoCal, good evening. The Petrol Electric 343 Echo Alpha is with you at 1,000. 343 Echo Alpha, SoCal Approach, Roger. Yep, so you can continue flying it just a little bit. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go left. Okay. I'm tilting it left. And then I, I push on my left foot. Yep, and then pitch up a little bit or we'll start descending. So pitch up, pull back. There we go. Oh my god. Excellent. And then go to the right and well, pitch okay. the nose down a little bit. Okay, 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 okay. It takes a little bit to get used to this. So let me ask you something. These foot pedals, there's one big bar on the bottom and then, yep. and then a little bar at the top. When I'm when I'm pressing, am I pressing the big bar? Yes, you want to press the big bar only. The little bar is your uh, brakes. So you kind of keep your feet off to the side of it. Oh, okay. And then as you roll, let's go right because we have some airspace out there for LAX. So as you turn right, and I push on my right foot. Yep, just a little bit to center the ball, and then pull back on the stick. Right, because any time we're turning and rolling, we have a yawing tendency, and that wants to make us descend as well. So, we always want to give it a little bit of pitch and a little bit of yaw whenever we're rolling the aircraft that's using those flapper on. That actually gets kind of scary. Well, I'm going to show you and demonstrate what we have to do as CFIs all the time. Because, you know, we do a lot of different maneuvers in these planes and it's kind of scary. And you're just doing this when in reality we Whoa. have to go all the way out, do some steep turns here. Maintaining our altitude, and then over to the wow, left. Wow, Luke, this is insane. <laughs> and then you can even have some fun, and sometimes it freaks students out a little bit by pitching down and getting Woo! zero gravity. Oh my god, yeah, wow, that was crazy. It's a really fun thing to do. <laughs> We're getting up to Malibu Lagoon here, so this is going to be our turnaround point. Okay, so we are at 71%. Charge. Correct. I'm going to increase the power just a little bit to get us back up to a thousand feet. Malibu Lagoon. Malibu Pier. All I'm going to turn around, go back towards the Palisades. Another steep turn for you here. Oh, look at that boat down there. We had a wind shift there. So that noise you just heard in your eardrums was actually our stall warning. And it comes well before the stall. But when you're in steep turns like that and you have a wind shift, you can also have something called an accelerated stall. So even though we were well above the stall speed there, if you pull a little bit too hard in these light sports, they like to stall a bit early. So when that happens, you just release that back pressure. You allow the angle of attack or where the aircraft's wing is positioned compared to the wind to come down. And then the plane will not stall. Drop your nose. Correct. However, this plane is so inherently stable that even if we were to put it into a stall, it, does, it just does not want to stall. It'll do something called a falling leaf, 
where it just kind of rides the edge of the stall down. Can I uh, fly it a little bit more? Yeah. Okay, so let me get this straight. So it, if I push this to the left, uh -huh. then the ball is going to go to the left a little bit. To the left, and then I want to push on my left foot Correct. to compensate. Okay, so Correct. let me try that. I'm going to push it. All right, your controls. To the left. Yep. Push on the left. Now go back to the right because that's a mountain. Yes, thank you. All right, let's. Okay. All right, to the right. To the right. Now I'll push on the right foot. There it is. Oh, okay. See? <laughs> yes. Excellent job. Okay, I just felt it before I wasn't doing it enough. Um, I'm going to go to the left now just a little bit. All righty. Okay, and if I'm doing that, then I want to. There we go. Push it. Okay. Very cool. Excellent work. Can I go to the right? Yeah, you can. Okay, and I'm gonna, I will put that ball back into the center. There we go, and you're gonna pitch just a little. Beautiful job. Right, so as the nose goes down, I need to pull back a little bit. If the nose going down, I wanna, I mean, I wanna pull, up. if it's going down, I wanna pull it up a bit, and if it's going up, I wanna push it down a little Correct, bit. so everything for the most part should just be done by looking outside, because that can really help you tell if you're going towards the ground or not. People tend to focus on those instruments, when in reality, you can just look outside. I need to contact SoCal, give me one second. And SoCal for 3 Echo Alpha, we're heading back towards Santa Monica, we do have Kilo. Take off, Roger. He's had enough of us. Yeah, he's like, shut up. So we're at 66%. Like, Echo uh, Alpha, Roger, so we're terminated, stay on that beacon code, contact Santa Monica Tower. We'll keep the code and contact Tower, have a great evening, 3 Echo Alpha. Good tip. Santa Monica Tower, Professional Electric 343 Echo Alpha is inbound with information kilo. We'd like to request a few maneuvers over the Palisades at 1500 before proceeding inbound. November 343 Echo Alpha, Santa Monica Tower, approved as requested. Approved, thank you, 3 Echo Alpha. Alrighty, so I'm going to climb us really quickly up to 1500 feet. That way we are at a safe altitude above the Pacific Palisades to do some maneuvers. That's our altitude, and we have a standby altimeter in case this is failed. Gotcha. Okay, so what number is what? How do you know? Oh, so we're almost 1,100 feet. Correct. We're at 1,240 now. And we're ah, climbing okay. up to 1,500. So that, that one is the... Correct. And what is this uh, number? It says 65 on the right. On That's the our airspeed. So we're going 65 knots in the climb right now. It's a pretty um, slow climb rate. Um, or slow climb airspeed wise, but it's called our VX climb, which is our best angle, so it's going to give us the most amount of climb and the least amount of distance. Cool. Hey, so uh, you've been out this way a bunch, so you fly all the way to Malibu. Usually past it. I go to Point Doom, Zuma Beach, typically. Okay, so we're at 61%. What do you usually wait before you head back? Um, so typically what we found out by testing it a little bit, me and Patrick, because he's the other instructor that can fly it, is if we go out to Point Dew and then come back here, we'll get to the Palisades at around 50% battery. Okay. We started the flight today with uh, missing 6%, so we started at 94. So let's say you're running out of power and you're a little worried that you might not make it back. Your first, probably the thing you're going to do is gain altitude, right? Yeah, so if you were really in that danger zone, which you should never be, but um, I would say that it's kind of a gamble. You could try to gain altitude, but then you're going to use more of your power more quickly because you have to have higher power setting to gain that altitude. Right. Um, so it's just, that's kind of one of those really hard, not impossible, but near impossible questions. I was just thinking because it's a glider, that's all. Yep. So we're coming up to the Pacific Palisades right here. Our house is just going to be down there, right underneath the Methodist Church. Uh, yeah, there's Palisades High School right there. Yep. And we'll do a quick turnaround to point around our house here before we head back to Santa Monica. All right. So this is an actual private pilot maneuver that you have to be able to do. It's called a turnaround to point. It's called a ground reference maneuver for that reason. So we're referencing something on the ground. What are you referencing? Our house and you have to turn around that point in a nice, even, and smooth circle. 
You also have to take into account things like the wind direction and speed. So as you can see, the wind's kind of pushing me here, so I'm going to shallow my bank a little bit. Okay. When I shallow my bank, it's going to allow us to kind of not get as close to the house. I'm glancing over. Oh, I see it now. I see our house. Yep. I'm glancing over at our airspeed and altitude because that airspeed and altitude we want to keep quite constant. We don't want to be climbing or descending in this maneuver. And then as you can see, I'm going to start getting pushed a little closer by the wind. So I'm going to try to increase our bank angle here. And as a light sport, this aircraft gets pushed quite easily. So I'm increasing our bank angle, double checking my altitude. And the wind's quite strong right now, so we got completely blown off course, and that's okay. Yeah, so now the, the our house is underneath us. Correct. Okay. And now we're going to head back to Santa Monica to land. All right, awesome. That sounds great. This is really, what a treat, Luke. Of course. Awesome. This is what the mountains look like over here. State land and uh, federal land. Ten tower for 3 Echo Alpha, we'd like to proceed inbound. Number 3 Echo Alpha, runway 2 on, clear for the option. 2 1, clear for the option. All right, so we're basically at traffic pattern altitude. It's 1,400 feet. We're at 1,500 feet. So we're just going to proceed straight towards the airport. The landing is the trickiest part about flying this plane because once you get to low air speeds, it tends to bounce around a little bit. Okay, right. And why is that? Because the wind is more turbulent the closer it gets to the ground. A little bit, somewhat. Um, yeah, it's hitting buildings and that's causing it to swirl around and right, uh, do off other the ground. things. Exactly. Uh, look at that, the Riviera Country Club right there. That golf club. Tour. So there's Santa Monica Airport. Two hour 11 o'clock right over there. Oh yeah, okay, I see it. We've descended down to our traffic pattern altitude of 1,400 feet. All of our engine instruments are looking fantastic. We're going to enter the pattern in a 45 degree turn into what's known as the downwind leg of the pattern. The downwind leg is basically us going the opposite direction of where we're landing. And we try to keep it kind of like a rectangle around the airport whenever we're entering the pattern or staying in the pattern. And we like to do it at 45 degrees because it allows us to see all angles of the pattern and ensure there's no traffic coming in. Yeah, it's pretty cool because, you know, I've been up with you a few times flying. And if you're not used to flying, it's confusing what you're looking at. But, like, I was able to spot the airport for the first time pretty quickly. He's already given us our landing clearance pretty far out, which is great. So what we can do is, wow. is we can just come on in and land. Why is that? How does he give you the clearance so far out? Just well, no one else is out. No one else is in the airspace. No one else is flying, so he can just give it to us. Yeah, and there, there's the airport right there. Yep. All right, we're coming up to midfield here, so we're below our flaps extension speed for the first set, so I'm going to bring flaps to one. And we're just going to continue here until we see those numbers or a beam our touchdown point. So we're now a beam our touchdown point, which is the numbers on the runway. And I'm going to bring that power all the way to idle. Oh, so in other words, you're lining up with the numbers on the air airfield down there? Yes, so that's and where I you tend to bring your power back and configure your aircraft and start descending. For to land. do your loop to head in towards the... Correct, yep. So one unique part of this aircraft, we don't. I don't personally understand exactly why. I think it's just the way the mechanics of how it's been built. But when you go to full flaps and you get closer and closer to your max flaps extension speed, a little whistle occurs. But um, there's such a low um, tolerance between our approach speed and our max flaps extension speed that the whistle just doesn't go away sometimes. Okay, so, so we'll keep an eye out on it. Um, the, the pilots, they'll know exactly what you're saying. Um, no, they won't the because I've never heard Charlie, this. Santa Monica Terra, wind 230 at 8, altimeter 2982, yes. runway 21, clear to land, following a light sport on a one and a half mile right base. All right, clear to land, runway 21, Fort with Santa Charlie. So, All I right. put in the last set of flaps here for our descent. Great, yeah, see that's higher up now. So we're at full flaps? Yep, and you'll start to hear that kind of whistling noise here shortly. I'm kind of making just a nice, smooth turn into here. I'm not trying to 
do anything too crazy just because we have to come in at such low air speeds in this aircraft. Our approach speed is between 55 to 60 knots. So it's basically this that warning, warning that we're hearing. Warning, yep. Okay, so it's basically saying you're about to stall? No. What is it saying? It's saying that we're close to the max speed at which we can extend our flaps. Oh, so you don't want to go any faster. Correct. Gotcha. Oh, man. I, geez, listen to this, because I've got the mic that is in the cockpit, and this thing is so quiet. Like, oh, yeah, I just took my headphone off. Say yeah. something. Yeah, and I can hear you no problem. It's crazy. All right, so as we come into land here, I'm trying to use my rudders to stay on center line. We're going to feel the Bundy dip. There it is. What's the Bundy dip? It just causes the plane to sink a little bit. So power's at idle. This landing nice and smooth. Slowly pull it back, letting it just sink right down to the ground. November 3 Echo Alpha, exit Bravo 3, contact ground. Bravo 3, November to ground, thanks for the help, 3 Echo Alpha. Alrighty, I'm gonna put our flaps back up. We no longer need them. So there are three, three positions for flaps? Yep, zero, one, and two. When you're taking off, what position are your flaps in one? Yes. Gotcha, and you only use uh, position three for when you're landing? Uh, position two. Yes. Position They're two. They're either zero, one, or two. So All when right. do you use three? When you're There is no three. Oh, I thought there were three positions. Yeah, zero is one position, oh, one is gotcha. one position, and two uh -huh. is another position. Okay. Santa Monica ground, Professional 343 Echo Alpha, soft 21 at Bravo 3, back to Proteus. 343 Echo Alpha, Santa Monica ground, taxi to Proteus, via Bravo. Proteus, via Bravo, have a great night, 3 Echo Alpha. You as well. Alrighty, I'm gonna open our door since it's a little bit warm. Oh, can I do that too? Yes, you may. Okay, so spin that. Yep, and, and then it has like a spring that takes it up. Yep, you just push it up, it'll lock in, and it's locked. Okay. Nice. Santa Monica Ground, Arrow One One Six Fox Trot Romeo with Bravo and Proteus ready for taxi. Air 116 Foxtrot Romeo, Santa Monica Ground, taxi to Bravo 5 Runner via Bravo. Bravo 5 Runner via Bravo, 116 Foxtrot Romeo. You can buy a Cirrus there. Yep. Now we're just coasting, and the prop's spinning, but it's windmilling. It's only being pushed by the wind right now. So we're going to take our handy dandy little turn here to head into Proteus. You're controlling the power there with your Perfect. left hand, that's the throttle. Correct. Okay. The boat, that's spinning, but it's the wind that's spinning the propeller. So this is all electricity powered. Yep, it's idle cut off right now. So it's just windmilling in that wind. And then when I input some power here, it starts to come back up. And then as you can see, we're turning in. And as I pull the power out here, it makes a kind of cool swooshing sound and slows down. Yeah, I think we actually have more sound with the wind blowing now yep. than we did before. So I have to kind of angle this thing right now um, in a bit of an interesting way, just as to not hit this bone here. That was just the chain. And so to shut it down, it's really simple. Just look at our system. 15 hours and 40 minutes. Can you remember that time? 15 hours and 40 minutes? Probably not, but I'll try. 15, All right. 15 hours and 40 minutes. Correct. And then we just turn off everything. Power, okay. batteries, avionics, everything. Yep, and master. And that's our flight. Hope you had fun. Oh, yeah, man. That was a blast. Good, I'm glad. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. How do I get this thing off? You twist this to open, like that. And then it'll just unclip oh, it. It's like a racing car. Yep, and then you're good. Give me one second, I need to talk to the plane. Don't want the plane to blow away, huh? Nope. All right, all set. You can take those for me? Yep. Thanks, buddy. 
All right, well, Luke is gone. Wow, what a treat that was. Man, that was awesome. So it'll be interesting when I put this video together to see just how loud the plane was. This thing is so quiet. I just took my headphone off. Say something. Yeah, I can hear you no problem. It's crazy. They need to put a beeper on it because you can't hear the plane. We could have carried on a conversation inside the cockpit, absolutely no problem. So it was really great. Just want to say thank you to Luke Farin for taking us on this journey and to Proteus Flight Training and Aircraft Rental at the Santa Monica Municipal Airport for allowing me to take a flight in this amazing aircraft. If you'd like an intro flight or to check out Proteus, look in the description of this video for discounts for my subscribers. And a big shout out to Signature Tracks at SignatureTracks.com for their awesome music and to Boris Sapphire for their industry-leading Sapphire effects. Check in the description below for Sapphire discounts for my subscribers. This is a fun video. It's not about farming. It's about flying planes. Yeah, I have this crazy dream that my son will teach me how to fly, and then I can fly a crop duster over my trees and fertilize my trees. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but uh, hopefully you guys like this video, and if you did, like and subscribe, and uh, just keep following me on my journey.